Hi, uh, hello everyone. Uh, we have the pleasure of having a distinguished guest today, uh, Dr. Rani Bose. Uh, Dr. Bose has had a, a very interesting career for those of you that don't know him. Uh, he um, uh, started, a, first he went to uh, undergrad at Stanford and then uh, he uh, uh, completed medical school and went uh, ahead to finish a residency in neurology, then a residency in radiology, because that wasn't enough for him. And then he went on to do a fellowship in neuroendovascular surgery uh, or interventional neuroradiology at NYU. He stayed as an attending there for several years. Uh, and uh, during that period of time, he uh, became the uh, inventor or co-inventor of two of the most popular and revolutionizing devices uh, at the time and still uh, being used today uh, for more than 20 years now, uh, the wingspan stent uh, for treatment of intracranial stenosis and the neuroform stent for treatment of, uh, of brain aneurysms. And then uh, uh, he made uh, one of the, if not the most important decision of his life, and he quit medicine. <laughs> and uh, he became the uh, founder and co-founder of a major uh, company now for at least 15 years uh, in existence, uh, Penumbra Incorporated, which is a company that initially was uh, designed uh, for the management of stroke and has evolved uh, to be more inclusive in the entire uh, uh, neurosurgical, neurovascular disease uh, treatment options and has evolved also into uh, uh, vascular surgery, peripheral vascular disease and cardiology uh, innovation. Um, uh, not only that, he's uh, uh, an art lover and he has uh, definitely uh, has been an entrepreneur uh, and a leader in the uh, Indian art collection uh, recognized uh, around the world potentially as the, you will tell me hey, if I'm correct, the, the uh, most extensive uh, collection of Indian art uh, in the world. Um, um, and, uh, and he has many other hobbies and interests, but uh, he will tell us about those. Welcome, Arani. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rafa. And um, obviously, for people that have been following us uh, over the past few weeks, we have been concentrating uh, initially, it was uh, talking about coronavirus disease and the relationship of coronavirus with the uh, different uh, uh, neuropathology. Uh, but now that uh, we're evolving, uh, because the, name, the, the cases of, of coronavirus have significantly decreased, uh, not just in our hospital, but the city, the state, and worldwide. Uh, we are, for the most part, trending in the right direction, except for a few hot spots, a few countries that are, have had a, a little delay in the response and, uh, and infection rates. Um, how has Penumbra been affected uh, with the pandemic in the past uh, few months? Yeah, it's, uh, it obviously affected uh, all companies and uh, all uh, areas, uh, all fields uh, of medicine and outside of medicine, and uh, Penumbra was no different. We, um, it kind of uh, um, it shook the company um, quite substantially. Uh, our, um, we're fortunate that we uh, didn't have much to deal with in terms of uh, supply chains. Uh, all of our uh, production um, and all of our facilities are uh, within the continental United States. Uh, so um, everything uh, is pretty much uh, made within, uh, uh, within our control and within, our, um, uh, within the United States. So we didn't uh, have a, uh, a, a critical part of our, uh, of our product that was um, uh, outsourced to uh, Asia or uh, Europe or something, and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't get those uh, materials uh, in. So we could keep up our production. Uh, we, uh, we undertook a, uh, just like every other company, we undertook a pretty extensive um, uh, a role in uh, in restructuring how we go about um, uh, 
uh, business and uh, that uh, relates to uh, how uh, how we work um, uh, at um, uh, in the business uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, and how uh, and how uh, what people are able to work from home and what people um, can't work from home and uh, obviously the production uh, floors of the uh, uh, of the production of the um, uh, of devices cannot work from home and so they have to uh, come to work uh, and how do you deal with those uh, people coming to work and so we had um, staggered shifts and we had, uh, and we had uh, break rooms where people could social distance and still uh, take uh, breaks uh, and we did that by um, and so our facilities for um, uh, those of you who don't know are uh, based in um, in the Bay Area in San Francisco uh, or near San Francisco, so it's uh, uh, it's in a uh, an island called Alameda, which is just uh, across the Bay Bridge uh, and near very near the Oakland Airport. So we had uh, and we have a, a campus kind of with multiple buildings, and there are large parking lots in those buildings which are not used now. Uh, and so we had uh, we set up tents um, and we still have tents. Uh, that are uh, throughout the parking lots and where um, where the break rooms uh, could be, so we could we could take breaks uh, and still social distance, and uh, and uh, the all of the um, non critical production uh, uh, staff uh, uh, would work from home except the um, you know five or six um, uh, critical uh, individuals in the leadership uh, that would uh, we kind of created a. Uh, a war room, if you will, uh, to handle um, the day-to-day, minute-to-minute um, uh, the things that would come up uh, to deal with the uh, with the crisis, and uh, and we've done um, a fairly credible job in trying to uh, keep up with those and keep uh, our employees safe and keep uh, production uh, for our um, uh, for our. Uh, physicians and uh, and hospitals and ultimately our patients. So it's um, it's been a it's been a challenge. We also had uh, right in the midst of that um, about um, about a month or six weeks or uh, eight weeks ago uh, uh, the day um, uh, I don't know if uh, you guys uh, uh, will recall, but there was a around a five point six or five point eight. Um, uh, earthquake in uh, Salt Lake City, uh, right in the middle of the uh, uh, pandemic, and uh, and that happened to be uh, we mo <laughs> we moved our uh, our um, facilities, uh, our storage facility, our inventory facilities from the Bay Area because we were right on the San Andreas Fault, uh, and we uh, wow. didn't want to be um, uh, I uh, be focused only on there. We moved it to uh, Salt Lake City, which uh, is uh, uh, is also on a uh, we thought less active fault, uh, and it was uh, and so there was a earthquake that uh, affected. The, uh, luckily, nobody was harmed, uh, no uh, uh, property was uh, damaged, but uh, but it required um, all the uh, the California people flying out emergently uh, in the midst of the pandemic to. Uh, to uh, Salt Lake City to cover the uh, so that inventory could be shipped out from that facility without any break uh, because that uh, that facility um, it results in all of the uh, all of the hospitals uh, getting the inventory that they need every day uh, so uh, so that was a little additional struggle so uh, so but we've uh, we've managed to uh, uh, make uh, make it through all of these crises and. Uh, uh, and we're uh, we're you know, uh, financially and uh, and um, production-wise um, fairly healthy given uh, given what uh, what we had to deal with. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for asking. Talk, talking about production and, and inventory uh, and financials, uh, the I imagine that there was a, de a significant decrease in the utilization of the devices uh, and your products over the past several months. Uh, did you see a, a specific areas of the country and or the world that in which you saw a significant decrease compared to others or some a places that stay stable or some that increased? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, there have been uh, published uh, data uh, now from uh, uh, um, regarding that uh, on the 
uh, from various parts of the world, from France, from the US, from, um, uh, from China. Uh, and what we found uh, is that uh, for, you know, uh, we don't know about, um, uh, about current, um, those analyses haven't been done yet, the current, uh, current month in, uh, in May. Uh, but uh, we do have um, some uh, information regarding April that was made public uh, on uh, our earnings call um, uh, yeah, uh, on May 10th, I think. Um, and that, uh, that showed uh, about a, in April, uh, which was kind of the brunt of uh, what was uh, um, the, uh, uh, the episode, uh, we had about uh, an overall um, effect of about 35% um, a decline uh, in, the, uh, uh, in uh, the revenue on the peripheral and the uh, neuro side. And we're, uh, you know, I think companies uh, uh, were uh, really affected who were dealing with um, the, uh, elective cases and, um, and those, uh, and we, deal in the peripheral space and in the neurovascular space and uh, and the and overall um, if uh, it's um, about um, about that 35 percent figure um, but in the uh, neurovascular space um, it's uh, th that um, that figure is uh, is actually somewhat less affected because there is um, there is less of um, a preponderance in our business uh, on the um, uh, on the elect elective cases versus the uh, emergent cases, and so um, with the uh, urgent or emergent uh, stroke um, therapy, uh, that effect was around twenty to twenty five percent in uh, April, twenty to twenty five percent decrease, and uh, and so if you look at the um, uh, uh, the worldwide reports uh, in uh, in France, for instance, there was a recent uh, publication, uh, and in um, and in uh, in China there were some recent publications that um, in uh, that seem to indicate uh, around that uh, twenty percent um, decline in the uh, in the acute uh, um, stroke cases. Uh, and uh, and so that's uh, and that's pretty much what we uh, what we saw in America. Uh, there there haven't been any um, areas that I know of that have shown a increase in uh, in usage uh, and um, uh, and there uh, and where uh, I I suspect I don't know um, uh, but I suspect we're coming uh, uh, we're we're coming out of. Uh, that um, uh, hard hit of uh, of um, uh, of decline uh, of decrease in volume um, on the uh, on the stroke side, uh, but um, but we'll uh, we'll know that once the numbers are uh, analyzed. Um, but in April, yeah, we we did see a around a twenty to twenty five percent decline in stroke volume. And another question before, and I would like to invite people to enter questions through the chat options with any question they want Arani to answer to you guys. Um, I, I'm always interested, in, and I've heard you talking about this before. Um, how did you transition from being a, a doctor to becoming an inventor? <laughs> uh, um, and because obviously uh, you, you need to have a special way of thinking different than most people. Most people just like to follow career paths and follow instructions, and, uh, but you need to have a creative brain and a creative spirit uh, to become a, a, an inventor and entrepreneur. Uh, what was your process like? Yeah, I, um, I can't say that uh, there was uh, really a uh, a process that I was aware of, at least. Um, there, uh, there was a, um, and this, you know, my, you mentioned my interest in, uh, in art, uh, and uh, my wife and I, and uh, a, um, a, a, my partner, uh, who uh, many of you uh, know very well, uh, Steve Pacia, um, in, uh, uh, who's a, uh, 
uh, a neurologist and epileptologist in uh, in the New York area. Um, we uh, we all uh, we all got to know each other because we um, uh, attended a neurology residency at Yale in New Haven uh, together, and so uh, from around we got to know each other around eighty nine or so, uh, 87, uh, 88, 89, uh, 91. Uh, so that. Uh, and, uh, and then I stayed on uh, in New Haven to do my uh, radiology residency. And then uh, at the, around 90, um, 94, uh, we, uh, so this was when uh, long before uh, smart therapeutics and the development of uh, the neuroform stent. Um, so that happened uh, starting in 98. Uh, so this is 94 we're talking about. Um, I, uh, we decided, uh, the uh, three um, of us and, uh, and some other uh, uh, people uh, decided to, uh, to start a um, contemporary South Asian, uh, India and Pakistan, other uh, areas in that region, uh, art gallery. So you might think, why, uh, what got into your head that you'd want to uh, start an art gallery? And so, and really it, it started uh, because we spent uh, a lot of time together, the, these uh, uh, friends, uh, uh, and we um, and we spend a lot of time uh, involved in um, art and, and seeing uh, galleries, and uh, and then we uh, uncovered that uh, South Asian contemporary art uh, was a interesting uh, unmet. Uh, need so uh, there was a lot of uh, excitement in uh, in the art of contemporary art of uh, that part of the world uh, um, locally and we knew that because we uh, were from there and we had some family there and uh, and so we are um, uh, we were knowledgeable about that uh, area of the world but there was um, for all the interest in the region. Um, in the art world uh, in the region, there was no visibility uh, of that part of the world's art uh, in the rest of the world, in the uh, around the globe, and we thought that was very unusual. And uh, and it was kind of uh, it, why wouldn't there be a, uh, an interest in? Uh, there were uh, galleries focused on uh, contemporary art from Japan, from Haiti, from you name it, Latin America, from a, uh, uh, various parts of the world, but none uh, about uh, contemporary art from South Asia, from India, from Pakistan. Uh, so, uh, and we, and as we dug into that further, we uh, uncovered why that might be. Uh, and, and we, um, and so we thought, you know, maybe um, people would be interested uh, if we um, had a show. Initially, it was just a show. And lo and behold, people were interested. And then one thing led to another. We started a little gallery. It was kind of a shoebox of a gallery in, in Soho on the second floor. Uh, and, and then uh, one thing led to another. And we, uh, and we developed a, uh, quite a presence uh, for over 20 years. Uh, and, but it stemmed from the idea that we were doing something that wasn't done. Uh, and it was kind of obvious that why wouldn't uh, you try to do this? And so I uh, t talk about that story because that is essentially the same thinking that uh, came into play for um, medical devices. And, uh, and so it didn't come uh, out of a desire to start a company. Uh, what do we know? What do I know about starting a company? Uh, nothing. And so the so, but uh, but I knew uh, about what um, the field um, needed at the time, and what I needed as a practitioner uh, at the time, and uh, and what uh, and what we were treating at the time was uh, a lot of aneurysms, and what the uh, field uh, thought they wanted at the time uh, was a another coil because the GDC coil had just gotten approved in the mid 90s. And by 98, um, when I was uh, starting uh, my you know, first couple of years of, uh, of uh, attending at NYU, everybody was interested in another coil. So um, yeah, every company was, uh, a large company was interested in, give me another coil um, that I can sell um, so to compete with target therapeutics and, and those coils. 
and uh, and uh, and it just seemed to me that uh, that was kind of um, a, uh, un unnecessary uh, because it it had already been done. Uh, so it, uh, there, unless there is some uh, coil that really changes the world, your a coil is another coil is uh, you know is another coil. Uh, and and what uh, and so what it, it seemed to me to be uh, uh, interesting was uh, to uh, address the um, root cause of the problem uh, that you needed the coils for, and that was the weakness in the vessel wall uh, that was causing a bulbous protrusion that was causing the aneurysm and that you had to fill. And so if you wanted to address that uh, root problem and to, um, to reinforce that uh, weakness in the wall and to hold the coils in, uh, what we really needed was a stent of some sort. Uh, and so that uh, led to um, eventually to neuroform and then uh, to an atherosclerotic uh, stent, uh, which led to wingspan. Uh, and so that was the um, unmet need, uh, just like um, the uh, unmet need of a commercial platform for uh, South Asian contemporary art, that was the unmet need. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, many of, uh, of you heard uh, uh, this said before that you know what we uh, the, um, the it is it is often uh, you often have a choice of whether to be uh, early or to be uh, wrong in uh, in any endeavor and uh, and this was a the choice of um, uh, starting with neuroform uh, and uh, and uh, as a as a first um, a step in uh, in the development, as opposed to what I ended up uh, doing with uh, with the second company, uh, a stroke device. Uh, why not uh, do the? We certainly needed a stroke device um, in 1998 as much as we did in in 2004 when I started Penumbra. Uh, why not start with the uh, stroke device? And and the reason uh, I think is. Uh, that it, it was not the right time uh, because the whole field was concentrating on uh, on uh, aneurysms at the time, and to um, to out of the blue come up with a a, a, a potential uh, solution to a, uh, a stroke. It was a solution to a problem that wasn't identified yet. Um, so uh, so that it's it's quite. Uh, important to sometimes be thoughtful and sometimes be lucky. And I think we were uh, equal parts in both uh, to, uh, to choose what you um, uh, address um, in terms of uh, the preparedness of the, of the field or of the, uh, uh, of the users uh, that you're, um, or the world uh, to accept your uh, solution. So, uh, so the, uh, by 2004, um, you could argue that we were still way too early uh, with the stroke device, uh, and we had to uh, wait until 2015 for uh, for us and others to uh, to really do the work um, to make uh, a stroke a, a a ubiquitous solution uh, and a proven solution. So, but it uh, but if you uh, fortunately, we were able to have the staying power to um, uh, suffer through all the trials and tribulations, uh, and um, and so uh, and so here we are. Yeah. So we, with your description, you you remind me, uh, and David, you will tell me if I'm right, uh, a lot about uh, the process that David has been through with playback, and uh, especially. Now that you say that uh, it took many years for people to be able to validate the stroke devices, uh, products in the technology world uh, uh, in the, to enhance communication, uh, where, like telemedicine, uh, unlike playback, uh, uh, were not proven until a disaster happened like COVID, uh, in which it forced everyone to, to look at new ways to communicate. Look at us, we're having this Zoom conference instead of having dinner right now at uh, some nice uh, uh, new restaurant in the city. 
Exactly. <laughs> so, David, uh, did, did, did you feel that way with this description? Um, no, I've, Ronnie and I could have gone like this over the years. In fact, I remember him coming to me at Roosevelt Hospital on or around 2005, uh, basically pipping me for information about the Alana catheter because I think he was afraid that their patent might be might have fucked up his penumbra patent. And um, <laughs> never in a thousand years would I believe what I've seen happen. Um, and I've always admired uh, Ronnie for the grit, the term of sticking, the stick with itness, and uh, knowing that this was something he developed that far. Everybody thinks was, oh my God, when it was so famous and so popular that, oh, that's amazing. It's so like, it happened just like so rapidly. Well, no, this goes back years and years of time, effort, and blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, device business is a little bit different than the, than the, the software business. I, I've actually showed what was then not even playback, you know, versions of this to Ronnie and Adam for years back in Jackson Hole in the late 2010, late 20, 28, 29, around there. But I think they're very different. I mean, the beauty of what you did was you adopted something that was more consistent with your world. And um, there, it's hard to be a neurosurgeon, run an apartment, have a software company and actually have it, you know, we now we're starting to find a way. And it's, um, uh, I think to Rafa's credit, uh, you know, he's identified this as something. Yes, I think we are in a unique position now. Um, and you have to have some, whether it's luck or just being in the right place, right timing, this happens. Most, uh, if you look at Fortune 500 companies, many, many of them, I think over 50% uh, were, does something like this happen to them? It's, it's very common in, in, in corporate America that they're just it, all of a sudden the right place, right time. And that's, that's a function of creativity and opportunity and, and then chaos breeds change. And so uh, that's the, perhaps the lesson learned from COVID for me is that this is an opportunity to change. And I, I do have a question for you that I've been meaning to ask you. Um, and I, this may put you on the spot a little bit, uh, which I guess that's what this is for, about this. But what COVID taught me and I think affected many of us was the um, the unique the uniqueness of healthcare in our society, the uh, kind of uh, unfortunate organization that we have in healthcare that there are uh, that it's it's basically organized with a pr primarily a profit motivation, and that works pretty well for most of the time. But when you have uh, high risk, low probability events uh, such as this, it just exposed you know, major flaws in our health system. And I personally uh, think that what, for all the success that you've, to take nothing away from the success of your idea, which was, my dad had a stroke, you know, I, he, I saw him have an M1 occlusion. I saw him suffer, saw my parents suffer. I, I, I you know, know the, what this has done for humanity. In fact, I think the, one of the first strokes I did, I called you. I remember I was in one of the first strokes we did here at Will Lennox to thank you, um, knowing that the, the effort that it took to do that and the impact this is going to have on people and knowing which I wish I'd had that in uh, 19, you know, 1993, 90, actually 1986 with my own dad. But I do think that what we're seeing now is a, a connection between a successful technology and a, and a market society and healthcare that's been so negative, in my opinion, to vascular neurosurgery and endovascular neurosurgery for that matter. And this kind of like metastasizing of stroke centers and the ridiculous uh, level of lack of level, lack of training. And I mean, it goes so far as people actually have said to my face, you know, I'm really good at stroke, but it's all the other stuff I don't, I'm not really as good at. And that's driven by the market. It's driven by the hospital. It's not your fault. But I think that unless, in the same way on the macro view, that the CEOs of this country sit down and talk about black lives and look at the, these intrinsic structural problems in our culture that are resulting in, in, in major discrepancies of healthcare, it led to, it's, and it's going to happen again. I think this, it's going to happen again. Do, do, do you have responsibility? Is there responsibility at the highest levels of the device business to somehow impact this in a way that may not be 
great for your bottom line in the short term, but undoubtedly would be better down the road as quality begins to erode and as we can't problems we can't treat, as we get these things overused and lawsuits and everything else that's bound to come out of, of this. And I'm sure you've thought about this because you've seen it the way I have. And, you know, and I'm just, I don't want to go too long with this question, but to have put in the amount of work that I've put in over the years to, to you know, to an, extra, to an extraordinary degree. And I'm not, I'm not complaining because every, I've learned so much and I'm so much better for it. And I'm at the point now where it doesn't really make a difference to me clinically, but to have been in my position, I've done as much as I have and still, it just doesn't matter almost. That to me, to me, that's, that's a problem. It doesn't mean it's not about me. It's just a problem that, it's, that, that that's not important anymore. And it's very different than, I think maybe the same thing happened in cardiology, I perhaps with stents back when, it's, but stent, the stent business is a little inherently different than hemorrhagic disease in the brain. So what's your, you know, that's a long-winded, you know, statement and a question. I'm just wondering what, how you see it. Like, what, what's your responsibility? What's Penumbra's responsibility? What's my responsibility? What can we do differently? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've obviously spent a lot of time thinking about that, uh, especially, uh, and I've thought about it uh, a lot uh, in terms of the, the response to COVID uh, and the, uh, and it's, you know, every crisis, um, is opens up uh, opportunities. Uh, it's I I put it this way. I there is I I get what you're uh, saying, and uh, and uh, like if you take Long Island, um, there there was a time uh, maybe not so long ago, you know, three years ago, five years ago, certainly. Uh, that there were um, maybe two hospitals uh, in uh, Long Island that um, that did uh, a neurothrombectomy, and and the the uh, patients in Long Island that had a stroke would go to those uh, one of those two hospitals, and uh, and they would um, have a, an experienced uh, uh, a practitioner at those hospitals that would um, execute the neurothrombectomy. Now. There are maybe ten hospitals in Long Island that are quote comprehensive stroke centers uh, and uh, and uh, can perform uh, neural thrombectomy. But instead of performing you know two hundred uh, cases uh, a year uh, in the two hospitals or one hundred and fifty cases a year, they uh, barely do you know forty cases, let's say, uh, or thirty cases uh, at those hospitals uh, per year. Um, over uh, over ten hospitals, it uh, and and I uh, the uh, just like uh, just like the, everybody on this uh, on this call there you know, we spent many many years um, learning how to do uh, uh, that particular uh, part uh, the, that particular neuro intervention or endovascular neurosurgery or uh, and. And there are um, people uh, that are now, you know, after a you know, one-year um, course or uh, fellowship training or, uh, or a few months, uh, are able to do, like you said, uh, uh, I can I can perform uh, stroke therapy, but you know, the aneurysm stuff and the other stuff, AVMs and and dural fistulas, it may be a little difficult for me, but I can do stroke therapy. And so, so they and and those hospitals can hire that person and and uh, cause uh, and be able to advertise themselves as a comprehensive stroke center. It, I, I would like to think that uh, we can uh, we can get that genie back in the bottle, I, but I don't think that's possible. Uh, you yeah, know that genie is not going back in the bottle. So what can we do? Um, what do we have the responsibility to do, as you as you said, um, as as a company, as physicians, uh, as uh, uh, as trainers, uh, uh, to uh, to help those um, smaller um, uh, hospitals or um, uh, hospitals that only do um, thirty uh, or uh, cases a year to get um, to 
uh, um, to get up to the, um, the hospitals that do you know, 100 cases a year or more. Uh, and this uh, has an impact um, globally um, in emerging markets. And if you talk about China and Brazil and, and Eastern Europe and rural uh, America, rural Europe, uh, India, uh, uh, all kinds of areas, the Middle East, uh, that, uh, that, we, uh, th that is facing uh, on a much different scale, the same kind of problem. And, and I think there is a opportunity that, um, that has surfaced over uh, this crisis um, in terms of uh, not, not being able to be there um, a, and still uh, effectuate um, the ability to learn and teach um, uh, from a distance. And, uh, and I think there are um, companies uh, uh, you know, like, um, uh, like yours uh, that, that, um, and, uh, and others that uh, um, are making that um, teaching and learning uh, uh, at a remote distance um, much more po uh, possible uh, now than it was ever uh, possible before. And more than, uh, more than that, uh, you know, the technology uh, may have been there for some time, just like your technology. I've been uh, you know, uh, seeing various versions of it for you know, a decade or more. Uh, and the, uh, but, the, uh, but the willingness to uh, adopt such technology and the willingness to see that, hey, you know, it, it might make a lot of sense not to pay a uh, a proctor to fly around the world and uh, you know to uh, to for a one hour uh, case in uh, a halfway around the world um, to and rather have a, a, a virtual proctoring ability or virtual uh, um, teaching ability or virtual fellowship ability um, you know in in uh, cases and and I think that the power of that. Um, to um, reduce cost, uh, to affect the bottom line, and to fundamentally affect uh, the teaching and learning uh, within the field uh, may be just uh, the tip of the iceberg that we're uh, now um, exposing. And, uh, and if, we, if we pursue that uh, in a uh, real um, uh, manner, we can, uh, and I think it can be fed by the uh, the uh, positive effect that would it would have on the bottom line uh, in terms of corporate America, um, uh, and and the positive effect that would have on uh, on integration of the uh, of the world's uh, um, you know, physicians and practitioners uh, to um, uh, to make that teaching and learning possible. Um, it, it's uh, I think it could be um, really important. And uh, Ronnie, following up on the question on the topic of uh, stroke centers and the evolution of the practices, what would be your advice to someone like Jason Ellis, uh, who uh, is an open vascular neurosurgeon, uh, skull-based neurosurgeon, who will be in practice uh, for the next 25 years at least? Uh, and your advice also, on the other hand, to Yafel Cerule, who's an interventional neuroradiologist, and will be in practice for the next 25 years as well. Uh, and you've seen the evolution of, of neurovascular disease. What's your advice to each of them? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, you know, I'm uh, qualified to give uh, uh, advice uh, on their uh, careers or development. But all I can say is that you know, what, uh, what I found so um, important uh, in, uh, in my career uh, was that uh, was what a um, uh, I think it was a, a medical school uh, professor that uh, that was giving a, a talk and uh, I I overheard the talk, um, but uh, he he said that you know the the best uh, collaboration um, between uh, between two people uh, the two collaborators uh, is. Uh, is one in which um, a collaborator A doesn't have the faintest idea what uh, collaborator B is uh, is thinking, talking about, uh, is trained to do. 
and uh, vice versa. Uh, collaborator B doesn't have the faintest idea what collaborator A uh, is about. And those are the most fruitful collaborations. And, and, I, and I found that um, to be true on many levels. Um, and, and so, you know, I would, um, I would open myself um, and actively, you know, every day, um, I, I try to, uh, you know, actively open yourself up to the um, ability and, and to opportunities to, uh, to, uh, to put yourself in places where you have no business being and, and put yourself in situations where uh, your, your expertise is not, um, not uh, valued and, uh, and where you feel very uncomfortable um, being there. And, 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 you know, and as a skull-based surgeon, it may be a, uh, you know, a, uh, a theoretical physics uh, lecture uh, or a, uh, you know, a, a um, electrical engineering uh, uh, you know, uh, conference or, a, no, and, uh, you know, it's a, I, I, I can't, um, I can't impart with uh, how important uh, those kinds of interactions um, uh, can be, and it's important for uh, for us as human beings. Uh, it teaches us humility, uh, and it uh, and it's important uh, intellectually because it opens our minds to uh, uh, to areas that uh, uh, that weren't uh, uh, weren't within the realm of possibility before. One of the things I think we have, which is dumb luck rather than by design is I kind of like went back and trained late because I thought that I, you know, I didn't understand interventional. Bernstein told me you can't do both well and all the neurosurgeons think they can do it. And I was like, you know, I, I thought I could learn how to do it and I'd be at a catheter, you know, interventionalist. And I went and trained and I, you know, when I was at North Shore, I was very busy with open endovascular. Um, never enjoyed it as much as open surgery, uh, frankly, you know, I variety of reasons just some have to do with when my brain works and blah 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 but like joining rafa the collaboration that we have what was so un what's so unique about it and then, and then adding yafel and jason on top of this is not only do I, it, the, if the best collaboration is not understanding what the other guy's doing i can understand how that can be very valuable as long as you're aligned you know the problem is more often than not that's hard to find because you're basically goes competing for the same piece of meat. And so, which is the way that 90% of these places are set up, which that's why the collaborations tend to be pretty lousy. Yeah. Well, we've, what I'm profoundly grateful for is the training and then the insight I had into my own self and also seeing a master interventionalist in Raphael and recognizing that I understand what he does up here like i understand it so but yet i also respect that i'm not as interested in doing it the way that as well i can do certain things as well you know there are certain things that are more low brow stroke, you're the stroke great <laughs> all, all the other stuff i don't care about no. yeah. <laughs> but, but it's what it's actually done is it's created a culture that we recognize that the strengths and the and the and the of not even weaknesses, we recognize the strengths in each of us and are able to find that for every patient, that this is just not a competition. Uh, you know, I know what I, I know, look, if, if Roth can't be there, if Yafel can't be there, I can go and do the case. If it's, if it's really high end, of course I'm not gonna do it myself. Why would I? I mean, it's just no reason to, but we try to do as much together as we can. We're always better with four eyes than two. And by the same token in the operating room, I'm able to, you know, use some of the experience I've had with, with Jason so I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be happier. But I also think that the way we behave and the environment we're in, it's just a shame because I do think it's been heavily discounted by the nature of the way the rest of the world works and the fact that it's not like that. And that the fact that hemorrhagic disease essentially you know, disappeared as a focus. And it's, it's, it's not really concerning to me. I, I, I think we'll be successful anyway, and we already have been. But it's really a function of the success of companies like yours. And 
you've taken something that previously was very difficult and not that it's not difficult, but it, it's the devices and the technology and the catheter design and all the, you know, it's gotten so much better that you've made things that were pretty inaccessible to most people accessible. And I, that's a, you should be congratulated for that. But there's always a downside. It's like Mark Zuckerberg, you know, in, you know, Facebook's a great thing until it's not a great thing. Yeah. And then, well, what are you going to do? You're the CEO, you know, you fucked the world up. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of, it's similar. And I, I, we see, I mean, this is a much different view than Facebook, yeah. but I, I think that the COVID thing uncovered this to me. And yeah. I already is already there, honestly. And I, these guys heard me talk about it before, but you know, the question is what can you really do from where you sit? This, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what I can do. All we can do is talk about it and lament it and, you know, move forward and do the best we can. Yeah, it's a, it's I, what we've what we have uh, tried to do, and uh, uh, maybe it was a bad thing uh, that we tried to do. But uh, and what we were successful in doing was, uh, and what we what we willfully uh, tried from the beginning was the democratization of uh, interventional procedures, and we we wanted uh, to you know not uh, have only. Uh, Jacques Moret uh, in uh, in Paris to be able to do uh, a, a particular procedure. We wanted to democratize the uh, the ability to do. Certainly uh, done that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, as we found out over the last you know ten days, yeah, democracy democracy is a fucking bitch. <laughs> 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 democracy uh, requires constant vigilance and uh, and you know and that's you know and that's what uh, we we have to we have to come to terms with and and it's a you know it's not just because you can do it um I, you know uh, how well are you doing it and how effectively are you doing it in uh, for that patient and and how can we use uh, you know tools uh, other online tools and other uh, virtual uh, tools to um, make sure that everybody is is up to performing the uh, the tasks at the same level yeah, and that, that's that's a constant struggle so so your company has grown tremendously uh, 16 years ago when you started it was uh, six initial employees is that the number that, that you had uh, we started with uh, two employees. In, <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> and, and today, how many? Uh, 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 I'm not sure. I think 2,600 or so. Yeah. yeah. So, so obviously, there has been a, a complete transition uh, within the company and, and the way you, you become leader. Uh, obviously, you, you're a tremendous leader. Uh, and Adam, uh, both of you, as well as many of the people that uh, you got surrounded uh, with from the get-go, you you had uh, you were able to attract real leadership. Um, what's uh, um, the way that you're foreseeing now that all the changes that are happening in New York City, that are happening in uh, in the country and around the world, uh, uh, for the how? to be a, an effective leader uh, in these days in which we are interacting by in remote ways, in which uh, we're not gonna have face-to-face -face contact as much as we used to, in which uh, the, the ways that we're working are definitely adapted uh, from what we knew three months ago. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I, I think, I think it's it's exposed all kinds of new opportunities. Uh, there are, you know, there are maybe you know five trips that I uh, I would have made uh, in the last month uh, uh, around the world uh, to see uh, technologies or to discuss with uh, with people and uh, colleagues um, that uh, that I was able to do. You know, if you you know, except for the wonderful dinners in various places uh, that uh, that didn't occur, uh, I was able to do them uh, quite effectively uh, and learn uh, quite effectively 
uh, and see uh, new technologies that you know that I hadn't uh, uh, I hadn't uh, seen before uh, quite effectively uh, on this platform of Zoom or you know, uh, or something like that. And it, it is um, and so and I was talking to um, you know uh, 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 Brian Yule, who's a uh, you know who's a, um, a long long time uh, sales rep at. Uh, uh, at Penumbra um, in the New York region, and uh, and and he was saying that you know his uh, his effectiveness at um, at interacting with uh, customers, uh, with physicians, and the uh, and the time that he gets to uh, not sit in the car and uh, and you know uh, and wait uh, you know hours upon hours and the whole day uh, to get a, a ten minute uh, meeting with a uh, with a customer. Uh, I, that has been transformed dramatically, uh, and and he's able to be much more efficient and much more effective uh, in uh, in terms of his customer interactions. Um, and and he's he said, you know, I've I worked harder in the last uh, you know uh, two three months than I have ever before because uh, and and you know and even at Penumbra we've seen in in terms of the sales reps and all of these people. And you mentioned uh, leadership and uh, you know communication. I, I think I, I think that's uh, critical. In uh, and Adam has done a you know I, I can't uh, I can't think of uh, um, anybody uh, who's uh, um, in the in the medical device arena um, in in our in the neurospace in our arena that um, that has done a better job than uh, uh, than he and his uh, the team at and Alameda. Uh, in terms of communication and leadership. And I think, uh, as you mentioned, communication is a critical part of, uh, of the leadership uh, element. And, uh, and you, you, know, you have to um, you know, uh, walk the walk and not just talk the talk. So you're, uh, and, uh, and you have to, um, you know, just like anything else, you have to tell them what you're gonna do you know, and and then do what you told them you were going to do, and uh, and you have to do it you know uh, over and over and over again, and it's uh, and and that's uh, you know that's a um, and if you and you just yeah <laughs> as we uh, as we found out uh, on the national scale it you know, it, it is uh, you know it's not that difficult you just you just can't be an asshole and you yeah and you just have to you know um, do the right thing. Uh, as uh, as much as possible, uh, and uh, and uh, and tell people that you're doing it, uh, and tell them exactly what you're doing, and uh, and that you did it, and uh, and that's uh, and I think that's that's um, kind of uh, that's pretty much uh, it in a nutshell. Hey, on a parenthesis, before another question, and I know that we're about to finish in five minutes or so. Uh, you mentioned before that a coil is a coil. But I use a penumbra coil today. So, <laughs> I just wanted to let I'm you know. I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> my, my sales reps are going to decimate me. <laughs> you only did that because you knew you were going to be on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Next week, you have a striker on. We'll be yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, any, any questions, guys? David, you want to say something? Uh, I, I'm profoundly respectful of of you. Uh, <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, amazingly uh, grateful for the hard work you've put in. You've saved many, you've saved many, many people's lives. You may have hurt some people's lives too. <laughs> I'm sure. One, one you, person. Not your fault. Not your fault. <laughs> uh, I, um, I uh, use your, use you as an example in my own mind of um, how to behave uh, as a an entrepreneur, as a physician, I know I even asked you at one point. I was thinking, like, should I, you know, what it was like to quit medicine? No, I'm not going to do that. But um, I think that your your pathway, your journey from where you came from, your family, um, your story, what you've overcome, uh, how smart you are, your gentleman, your hardworking guy. You've got a great family, and um, you are what our country. Uh, does at its best. And uh, I think if, if anything, we have to celebrate that. And um, we should all be as, as, uh, as gracious and as ethical and as empathetic as you are. 
and I think we'd all be better off for it. So I, I, I'm so happy that you were able to spend some time with us and answer some tough questions. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. I also just want to thank you for the advice of uh, how to build a uh, good relationship with uh, Rafa and Yafel. Um, what you said about uh, the uh, the relationship being a little bit uncomfortable and they having uh, something unique to offer to me. And, and that's, that's certainly true. I try to visit the Angio suite at least once a week. And whenever I go up there, I tell them, guys, I'm really uncomfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> so they teach me something really quick and then I leave. <laughs> I guess uh, my take home message is, Jason, every time you come, I'll just make sure I point at the wrong vessel so I confuse you a little bit. <laughs> make, make things a little harder than what they really are. Roth did a great angiogram today, I heard. It was awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, Harani, uh, an honor and a pleasure always to spend time with you. Uh, I uh, really enjoy uh, uh, your company. Uh, this is, uh, again, the first time we do this uh, at a distance, um, and, and I hope uh, this uh, distancing can end soon so that we can really uh, enjoy uh, in, you in presence. It is uh, delightful to hear you uh, talk about uh, the way you have uh, evolved as a human being, like you said before, in life, which is what counts the most. Um, and. Uh, uh, thank you for, for every piece of advice. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your generosity uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you. I, I look forward to the day uh, very soon uh, that we can all, uh, all of us, all, uh, all five of us, sit down and break bread and raise a few bottles of wine together. <laughs> for sake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Sake. Yes. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah. Bye-bye.